Welcome to another edition of Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. With us, very special guest, first time guest, Dion Jones. Dion Jones is a Brooklyn native who has been a dedicated educator for 15 years within the New York City public school system. Throughout her career, she has served as a special education teacher, dean of students, assistant principal, supervising special education and mathematics. Dion is currently a district achievement instructional specialist in math and science for the community school district 17. Dion is also a proud mother of a 16 year old, Elijah. She's a proud mother of 16 year old Elijah who was born with Down syndrome and later diagnosed with autism at the age of five. As a result of his diagnosis, it was discovered that Elijah sensor, sensory processing disorder referred to as SPD. It was Elijah's struggles with SPD that led Dion to create a program called Uniquely Me Creative Arts, known as UMCA. In October 2023, Dion launched this new program at her church, the Bethany Baptist Church in Brooklyn. UMCA's goal is to provide support to children with special needs and who have SPD through sensory Focus creative and visual arts activities that includes dance, music, and acting, as well as providing experts in the field to talk directly with families, strategies, and development, and develop to uh, help those families meet the challenges of their special needs children. Dion is the first time guest on so reaching out. I'm proud to meet her, glad to have her on, and very, very excited to hear about Dion and her program and the uniqueness of individuals getting involved in community activities. Dion, that long introduction, welcome to Reaching Out. <laughs> but that was an amazing introduction. Thank you so much, uh, Gregory, for having me. Um, you know, it's a great opportunity to always be able to spread information and awareness about children with special needs. So like you said in the introduction, you know, my son Elijah really lit the fire for me, one, to become a special education teacher, right? Um, <clears throat> two years after he was born, that's when I started to work for, back then it was Department of Education and um, becoming a special education teacher. So with that being said, you know, being able to close gaps for children, both professionally and in my personal world, by founding UMCA, it's, it's really a blessing. That's what I, I like to call it. And one of the great parts of UMCA, not only are children working on their sensory sensitivities through creative arts activities, but the parents, right? We, when I um, had to find programs for Elijah, one, I would have to go all the way uh, up in Manhattan, right? Um, it was a travel hardship back then. And I would just, you know, be there on my phone or catching up on some work and not really interacting with parents and who, who are in a similar situation. And at UMCA, not only do we have the experts in the field that come and give strategies and support and resources, but we lean on each other as um, parents. We have our own group chat. Um, we're getting ready to start going out with each other, just really developing and build a community because there are different um, joys and challenges that we face that typically developing children don't face in their parents. So it's great to have that community. Well, so we could get an idea. How many um, people do you have that participate in your organization. Uh, tell us how many people you have on your board and then tell us how many children you have in the program. So my board, um, we have five people on my board and in the program, we have consistent 10 families that come. 
when I say consistent, they come every month. They are part of the group chat. You know, we have a, a special bond with each other. And then we have folks that come and, you know, for whatever reason, they come, you know, sporadically, which is okay because, you know, having a child with special needs is, is up and down. It's having children, period, right? But, um, you know, just being able to get out you know, sometimes can be a struggle. So we understand that and they participate in love in other ways. So we have about 10 consistent families that come. Okay. So let me, let me ask you, um, if someone is listening to the program and they really, really want to know what your program is about and they have a special needs child, they want to get involved, how would they do that? Do you have room for more? Yes, I have room for more. Absolutely. Um, we meet on the third floor of my church every second Saturday of the month. You can always go to our website, umcanyc.org, to register. As soon as you go there, it says register for UMCA Saturdays. And we ask you to register and bring a friend. Because, you know, again, it's a small, tight-knit community. But we have to stick together to be able to, you know, make sure that our children live an inclusive life as possible. Now, um, once again, your church is located? At 460 Marcus Garvey Boulevard in Brooklyn, New York. The zip code is 11216. Um, it's a big church right on the um, right-hand side of Marcus Garvey Boulevard. Um, you can't miss it. Um, so in fact, the 15 bus, if you're um, traveling by bus, is right um, off the corner. So it's very accessible to the A&C train as well. Okay. Now, if, if someone was to come to your program, you say it's the third? Second Saturday. Second Saturday. From 10 to 12. From 10 to 12. Yes. What could they expect? Oh, gosh. So they can expect to come in and they can go up to the third floor and their children will have a sensory room. If I have opportunity, I can even show you what it looks like. Um, I can share my screen. Um, they can expect their children will be engaged in an arts activity. Special education teachers are there to work with their children. We also have volunteers. So it's about a four to one ratio. Um, so your child is very well protected and then you can go walk to the family room and have like a respite, if you will, and hang out with, um, families and listen to our guest speaker. This past Saturday, we had, um, Dr. Denise Gibbs, who is a physical therapist, giving amazing strategies. And we were able to, you know, talk about different, you know, um, Let's say we, we kind of get off topic sometimes, which is okay. And just sharing ideas and sharing, you know, stories. So that's what they can expect. And we always have food, um, you know, bagels and fruits. And just everybody just has a good time for two hours. Okay. So you get, to yeah. be, you get to be separated from your child and, you know, not even realize it sometimes because they're having so much fun. Because we have some children that are really clingy to their parents. And for some reason, when they come to our program, they are not so clingy. So we do enjoy that. So it's it's a moment of uh, it's a couple of hours for a parent that has to constantly uh, tend to their child to have a, a few hours to themselves. Yes. Oh. Yes, a couple hours to themselves and just be with like-minded um, families and getting help and resources, crying, laughing, and having a good time. So uh, what is uniquely, um, I would say, unique unique about your program? What, what, is, what is unique? I think that's the unique part of it. Like I um, said earlier, when um, the, the parent piece, right, and really supporting and developing and nurturing parents in this process, because mm -hmm. when I would go to programs for Elijah, mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I was just in the hallway on my phone or, like I said, catching up on some work and not really, you know, being able to get resources from people who are in my same situation. So that's what really makes our program unique. And then bringing in experts in the field, we're bringing in doctors, lawyers, judges, um, to really come and give uh, strategies. We're having a financial February where we're bringing in special needs attorneys and guardianship judges, because, you know, as a special needs parent, when your child turns 18, there's certain legal, um, documentation that you have to fill out for guardianship and you know you just can't leave your child money 
right? It has to be set up in a special trust. So really providing parents with these resources. And again, we have an uh, intimate uh, connection. You know, we talk about from soup to nuts, right? Um, sometimes even some of our children are on medication. What type of medication is your child on? Like, how is it working for your child? And then we're a, you know, really troubleshoot just a lot that goes on with our children. Well, let's not just breeze by that. You said something important. Financial February? Yes, financial February. And, and we're in October. So you said financial February. So do we, we have to wait until February to get the financial advice or is that just- I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. So we've had, we have our year planned out and what happens is November, we're coming up on our one year anniversary and I'll tell you guys more about that. And then December, we have a huge holiday party. Um, and then in January, we do wellness because as we know, the holiday times can bring all sorts of feelings, good, bad, you know, so we like to have that wellness in January. And then in February, that's when we're touching on our finances because you can't be right, you know, financially if your mind is not right sometimes, right? So right. Um, just really, um, that's why. Okay. So uh, we're listening to Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters with a very special guest, Dion Jones of Uniquely Me Creative Arts. And we are talking about uh, her program that's unique to special needs children. And she is a special needs mother and she founded this. Uh, November 16th, you mentioned it marks the one year anniversary of this program. Yes. How many things have changed during your first year? Wow, so, so many things have changed. One, we grew um, in numbers. I would say we've had, in, um, from the since the time that we started, we had about 100 families come in and out, but I told you we have our core families. We are also introducing legislation uh, with Assemblywoman Stephanie Zinnerman of the 56th District, where we are trying to implement safety signs around District 75 schools. And the safety signs will, um, you know, like the um, safety traffic signs will say children with special needs are learning here because oftentimes we have people that are honking really loud and our children take a little bit longer to get on and off the bus. Sometimes there's a lot of um, people play a lot of loud music and, you know, our children have sensory sensitivities. And most of all, some of our children like to elope, right? And um, we all know about the unfortunate situation with Avante. And just recently, I believe up to two years ago, there was a child who actually went to my son's old school who managed to get on the Long Island Railroad and all, go all the way to Long Island who was nonverbal. So perhaps if these signs are there, right, one, people will be more cautious and sensitive. And if you see a child that may look wayward, you know that, hey, this school, it's... Um, provide services for children with special needs. Maybe they belong here. Let me try to support this child. So I'm really I'm implementing that piece of legislation to ensure the safety and wellness of our children. Um, so yeah. those are some of the things that we've done. Um, and again, just really developing relationships within the community. We have a lot of community partners, Patrol Borough Brooklyn North, uh, Anchor Health, Tribeca Pediatrics, they all, you know, support us so that we're able to pour back into children with special needs and their families. What would you like to see happen in your second uh, year? Great. So my second year, what I would like to see happen is I would like to um, develop continue to develop a curriculum, a sensory focused creative arts curriculum to support children while they're in school and to uh, develop a relationship with a college, um, particularly Pratt Institute. They have a creative arts therapy program. So I'm just really trying to strengthen our program with partnerships and, you know, really looking to go possibly into special needs schools to provide a sensory focused creative arts curriculum. Okay. So tell us about uh, Uniquely Me's special needs safety science initiative. You just went through that. Uh, how, how would people support that? Because when you have legislation, you also need people to help lobby. You need people to call their legislators. And you, you need that. So tell, yes. tell our listeners 
absolutely how help you help assist in in this endeavor one you can actually go on to our instagram page and we have the uh, sign on letter there um if you go into the link in our bio you can also call assemblywoman stephanie zinnerman's office of the 56th district and let her know that you are in support of the um, safety signs. And also I can share with you the link so that people can actually sign up and you can share with your network. So again, if you go to our um, Instagram, you'll be able to see the link. If you don't have Instagram, we'll have it on our website. So you can also sign on to the letter. So that's how you can actually support this movement. And now I, I would say your, your Instagram would be uniquely me. No, it's UMCA NYC. Okay. UMCA NYC. Okay. All right. And what are some of the uh, special needs resources that the public should know about? Well, one, they need to know that, you know, their child, their, their, their laws, right? Idea laws. Every child is um, uh, entitled to a free appropriate public education, that if you are not satisfied with your child's current, you know, state of education, that you have laws and you have people that can advocate for you. You can also receive government services. I receive um, a home attendant for my son, so that's how I'm able to work. And, you know, they receive him off the bus. You know, so there's a plethora of government services that are there for children with special needs. Um, you can also receive stipends to have recreation services. So again, if you join UMCA, we always are sharing information and things that you are literally entitled to when you have a child with special needs. Okay. Any advice that you would, uh, any advice to parents who might uh, suspect their child has special needs? Where would they go to have that child diagnosed? Well, if their child is from zero to three years old, I always say to go to your pediatrician. And what happens is your pediatrician will do some, you know, um, diagnostic screening. And then they will call in like for you to actually receive screenings for early intervention. Early intervention allows you to receive related services in your home, physical therapy, um, speech therapy, occupational therapy. So just really being able to tap into these services um, earlier on. And if you feel like, you know, your child is now in public school, you speak to the school's psychologist, all schools that are New York City public schools, they have psychologists. And you say, you know, my child, um, I feel like they may not make in milestones. And you also get documentation from your child's pediatrician that you would like to have your child evaluated in school by the school psychologist to see if they would need an IEP, which is an individualized education plan, right? That is federally mandated for children who qualify for services. Okay. So what more can uh, public schools do to help children and families coping with special needs? Well, what more they can do? One, you know, um, just provide those resources to families in terms of, you know, we do have social workers, but making sure that the social workers are providing outside resources for the families because everything can't be done during a school day, right? And there's plenty of opportunities for our children within New York City, but sometimes parents may not be aware of. But just making sure that the awareness is there and the, the support is there. You know, maybe if they want to have monthly meetings um, to share resources that's going on in the community, but constant communication and awareness about what is going on, um, the opportunities for children with special needs that's right here around them. What is your wish list to better the system? You, you have a wish list. Uh, give me give me a few things that you would you would say you would need. So one of my wish list is for the D75 signs to go up, right? Um, to make sure that that awareness is um, with around schools that actually educate children with severe special needs. Um, the other wish list would be to just remember that children have sensory sensitivities and to 
have a program where, you know, we're working on different sensitivities, sensitivities in the schools through creative arts and making that a part of curriculum, that these sensory focused creative arts activities, you know, instead of drawing, for instance, this past Saturday, we painted pumpkins, but we did it with textures and feathers and just allowing children to get that tactile input because it really helps to regulate them. So really understanding the importance of sensory sensitivities through a curriculum within the schools. What could be some of the uh, positive results of, of your program? So some of the positive results, it's one, there's no cure for sensory processing disorder, right? So that's why we work on it through the arts activities. And some of my children, you know, like I said, a lot of them had uh, separation anxiety. So now they're able to, since coming, they're now able to go in and play with other children and communicate and live an inclusive life with, with their peers without, you know, always clinging on to their parents. Um, another piece is socialization, right? You'll see your child socializing more with other children. Oftentimes, children with special needs, they play by themselves or they play with the adults, right? You'll see increased communication with that. You'll also um, see um, in your child the ability to not have a meltdown, right, if they go into a room and it's too loud because we're working on their sensory sensitivities. So instead of them now going in and having a meltdown, they're more tolerable to the situation and they're able to live a more inclusive life. And as for the families, the bright side that we see is developing relationships because you know it, it's, it can sometimes feel like you're alone, right? Even though you have family, but your family members are not going through your child waking up at night um, all the time, struggling with, you know, various eating challenges. So it's good to have a support system where you can lean and call and say, hey, is your child doing this? How did you do this? And, you know, just being able to have that great support system. And uh, how would you measure success? I will measure success by um, one, people coming, like, you know, developing and, and having that sustainable um, folks that consistently come. I will measure success by children living inclusive lives. Like I said, you know, being able to wear gloves. Some of our children can't wear gloves, but by coming to our program and engaging in tactile creative arts activities, now they can wear gloves. Some of our children don't even like to wear shoes. So seeing those, you know, inclusive moments for children, that's how we measure our success. You know, they, again, they don't like to communicate with each other and you, just seeing them playing with each other. That's how we measure success. Okay. Now, I think maybe one of the most important things is, how are you funded? So right now we are funded by me, right? Um, we've had some donations, um, but we don't have any, I would say sustainable funding. Uh, we did just recently apply for capital funding with Assembly One, Woman Zinnerman. Um, we are going to apply for some discretionary funding. We apply for grants. Um, we did receive a grant from the laundromat, but very, you know, majority of it is through God's from the laundromat was the laundromat project. They okay. are a um, organization that is helping to support nonprofits in um, Central Brooklyn. So um, we apply to Brooklyn Org. They are also another nonprofit. So we've been applying, but we haven't received any um, real sustainable funding. Are you a five hundred one three C? Yes, we are um, a registered five hundred one C three. So, which is you know, we received that status uh, back in April. Right. So um, we're ready to receive the funds. And um, do you have a fundraiser coming up? Yes, we do. So we have our fundraiser, our one year anniversary, November 16th. That's going to be at Bethany Baptist Church from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. We um, so far we partner with the Brooklyn Public Library. They'll be there to um, cut library cards there for our children. Uh, we also partner. So November and 16th. Health, um, and Tribeca Pediatrics to make it more of a, mm -hmm. Yes. November 16th, there's going to be children performances, food, you name it. Okay. So 
how much are the tickets? The tickets are $75. Children are free. Um, we do have opportunity for community partner sponsorship. And we also have opportunities to purchase journal ads. And I can, um, if you go to our website, umcanyc.org, umcanyc.org, um, all the information is there to um, purchase tickets, purchase a journal ad, or to become a community partner. Okay. Uh, if someone wanted to attend, where would they go to purchase a ticket or sponsorship? They will go right to our website. They can go to umcanyc.org, umcanyc.org. So that's November 16th? Yes, from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. at Bethany Baptist Church. At 3 p.m. Yes. Come on out, please invite your families. We're going to have a great time. We're going to engage in sensory stations. We're going to have a silent auction. So it's going to be fun. It's a fun fundraiser. Okay. Yes. Leon Jones of Uniquely Creative Arts, thank you for coming on Reaching Out. I enjoyed our discussion. I, I learned a lot. And uh, somehow, some way, we will be participating in your event because we think you are doing marvelous work. And uh, since you're in the church, we're going to say you're doing God's work. Amen. That I am. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for coming on, reaching out. Uh, you've been listening to Gregory Floyd, uh, President of Local 237. You've listened to another edition of Reaching Out, a very special guest, Dion Jones of Uniquely Creative Arts. Thank you for coming on, reaching out and sharing your story. And thank you for having me and allowing us to share the story. Thank you. You're very welcome.